All right, we got you know another versus video, and uh, today we got Rimuru Tempest from that time I got reincarnated as a slime versus Kumiko from Soma Spider. So what? The connections between the two of these, like they they make sense. Both of them, when they were reincarnated, showed up in a dungeon. Both of them basically interacted with a very strong dragon and eventually served like you know. I guess kind of got the dragon's power more or less. I mean, she got it through like I think experience and shit through killing him, while he just absorbed him. So they eventually, you know, uh, got out of the dungeon and did a bunch of crazy shit and uh, kind of got and feel uh, affiliated with like demon lords and shit. But anyway, anyway, uh, well, let's first talk about Remur. So, Rimuru has a bunch of shit. I'm just going to go over all of his abilities, and, like, if anything seems interesting, I'll just talk about it. So, here's his first ability, which is Azathoth, or the unification of Raphael and Beelzebub, which is two of his previous abilities that he's had before this one, uh, with the integration of Veldora and that person, who I don't really remember who they are, but, you know, whatever. Uh, what it can generally do, it's got Soul Gluttony, a uh, super enhanced version of Predation uh, Gluttony, which uh, can devour the target's soul, ignoring space-time. I don't know why space-time is needed, but it can ignore it, so that's, that's cool. Imaginary Collapse, the ultimate destructive energy that fills uh, imaginary space and is able to be used uh, at full efficiency with the assistance of CL. So you can control an imaginary space. What, what the fuck? Already it's pretty insane, but like we got a shit ton more, so get ready. Imaginary space. So that's what they were talking about. A chaos world, the ultra evolved version of stomach or isolation uh, with unlimited size. So it's infinite. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, it's a prison where those who need to be quarantined are locked up. Uh, basically, uh, if he absorbs you, you get thrown in here and you're probably not going to get out. So that that's cool. True Dragon Release, uh, a variant of parallel existence that allows for Veldora and them, uh, as well as uh, the power to exist simultaneously assimilated with Rimuru and active in the outside world. So that that's cool. Uh, when activated, a another body of Veldora slash and or uh, Velgrid, I, I tried to say it, uh, is created and all of Rimuru's energy that would have otherwise belonged to them is loaned back. Uh, it can be undone with the respective True Dragon's uh, consent and after doing so, all of their energy will return to Rimuru. Uh, next one is... Um, True Dragon Nucleation, I think that's what that says. Uh, if Valdora and slash or Vel, Vel, Valgrid, I still don't know how to say that name. Um, uh, if their energy is not currently lent by True Dragon Release, uh, it can instead be materialized in the form of a sphere, spherical core. That's what that said. I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't read that with the, uh, the button. Uh, the core contains all of their energies as if uh, it were their own, uh, if there, if it was their body and can be slotted into Rimuru's sword, creating an unmatched weapon. Space-time do uh, domination manipulates and bends uh, time and space to the user's will, allowing the use of instant motion just by continuously thinking about it. Okay. Uh, multi-dimensional barrier, absolute defense, uh, is achieved through the separation of spatial dimensions and several powerful barriers able to block anything the user can comprehend. What the fuck? From what I got from just that, that sounds like a better version to, like, of Infinity. Instead of just going like, ah, it's an infinite space, like, no, I just block anything that comes near me. As long as I can comprehend it. Which, you know, that's interesting. Sub, uh, you, you see it, um, uh, skill creation allows the user to create brand new skills based on the data obtained from analysis and food chain. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. 
Uh, skill duplication allows the user to uh, recreate skills that they have a full anal uh, uh, an analysis of. Skill gifting uh, allows the user to grant skills to uh, a target, assuming they're compatible. Uh, uh, skill storage stores the data of all analyzed skills so that they can be recreated later. Okay. Uh, intrinsic skills, ultimate slime. Uh, Dragon Spirit Hockey, a uh, powerful hockey that allows the user to imbue their aura with various magical and physical properties. Uh, when used to its fullest, it, <laughs> it allows the user's aura to shred anything it comes in contact with. Damn! Um, Universal Sense allows the user to perceive almost all sensations, including but not limited to light, sound, smell, and heat in a wide radius. Uh, Universal Shapeshift allows the user to freely change their bodily properties and disguise their appearance. Interesting. Uh, these are his tolerances, which abnormal condition nullification. So any abnormal conditions that he is put on to him, like poison, I guess, for, is a good example. It like it won't affect him. Uh, holy slash or holy demonic attack resistance. So he's resistant to that stuff. Uh, natural mu uh, natural effects uh, nullification. I don't necessarily know what that means, but it's just he's nullified to natural effects, I guess, in in nature, I guess. Uh, pain nullification. He can't feel pain. Uh, physical attack nullification. So physical attacks basically won't work. Spiritual attack nullification. So you can't even attack his spirit. Damn. I'm pretty sure these are his uh, moves, or basically. Uh, Aura Slash, uh, one of the most basic but also most deadly attacks within uh, Battle Will's arsenal. Uh, the user launches their aura outwards uh, from their weapon as a projectile. Uh, the or Aura Sword, the user coats their weapon in uh, aura using uh, Model Will. This body or er, boosts the weapon's durability and damage potential drastically. Um, form Hide? Allows the user to hide their presence and form. A uh, haze form hide pushed uh, to its absolute limit. Uh, the art works in stages. First, you rid yourself of any sound, then wipe away any smell and disguise your temperature before finally wiping away your aura and spirit. Uh, the end result uh, makes the user undetectable uh, to things such as like magic sense. Uh, the other is to... You know, he, he is com basically completely undetectable even by stuff that can just sense magic in your your spirit even. Instant move allows the user to rapidly increase their speed for a single movement, allowing for uh, an almost teleportation-like effect uh, visually. So he's technically not teleporting, but it's it makes it look like they're teleporting. They're just moving really fast. Magic bullet. Magic flame bullet. It's just a bullet attack of magic, I guess. Um, a fundamental technique, uh, model will, uh, that allows the user to create, uh, constructs out of their aura. Uh, they can also create bubbles, uh, able to encase objects, magic, or the effects of skills within. Hmm. Mystic Arts, uh, Storm Break. Uh, the user's blade is coated in highly potent storm magic attributes, and while it may not have a lot of raw power in comparison to Melt Slash, it makes up for it uh, with how it seeps into and corrodes the body from the inside out, nullifying regeneration and dealing damage over time, corroding their life force. And then, of course, Melt Slash, which, you know, basically already explained. Uh, we got Absolute Guard, Absolute End, which is uh, interesting. Flare Circle. Uh, Hell Flare, Magic uh, Flame Bullet, it's just a fire bullet, I'm assuming. Hell Flare is probably just an, like a better version of that. And Flare Circle, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen in the anime. It's basically just a magic circle, then fire comes out from uh, below it. These are a bunch of different magics. Uh, engraving Magic, Explosion Magic, Explosive Flame Magic, Explosive Flames, Super High Explosive Flames, Fire magic, fire, fi uh, fire ball, fire wall, fire storm, ice magic, icicle lance, icicle shot. Like there's just a bunch of you can you can see them right here. It's a bunch of magic. Uh, storm uh, magic, and I, apparently this is true dragon magic. A uh, death calling wind, storm of destruction, black lightning, black flame, and storm blast. 
and there's also scorch magic, and there's just other, which is an imaginary blade. Don't know what that is, but it sounds interesting. We got elemental magic with barrier magic. Okay, uh, it's got an anti-magic area, and I'm pretty sure you've also seen that in the ma uh, the anime. It basically just disables all magic within the barrier specifically. Uh, and then there's a uh, space expansion uh, barrier. There's also, of course, earth magic and like engraving magic, as we said before. I kind of missed this one. Uh, we got illusion magic, confusion, uh, channeling, and thought photography. I think that's what it says. Legion magic, a uh, uh, completed transportation technique. This stuff is just way too long. Mental magic, magic communication, nuclear magic, abyss annihilation. That sounds badass. Spatial magic, dress chains, warp portal, and just transportation. Um, water magic, wind magic, that being wood cutter and tornado blade. Uh, and then there's like spirit magic, which has a bunch of different like spirit versions of like elements and shit. You can see it right here. Space spirit magic, fire spirit magic, wind spirit magic, water spirit magic, earth spirit magic, necromancy, secret arts of revival, resurrection, and implantation. Uh, others is elemental communication, uh, sacred birthday, what? Uh, secret of faith and grace. Cool. Um, and then you got summoning magic. You can summon demons and elementals and stuff like that. As you can see here, you can uh, summon uh, greater demons, lesser demons, or demons, or however you're supposed to pronounce it. You can also summon, uh, elementals, like Ifrit. Uh, and then summon, uh, medium elementals, salamander, and then, like, all the other, you know, elements, like a gnome. Here's the other ones. You can see holy magic down there, too, with, like, holy cannon and holy bell. Right here, and other ones that we have is, uh, holy field and prison field. Uh, you got miracles, I'm assuming. Uh, disintegration, holy ray, and resurrection. Uh, physics magic, uh, Megiddo and uh, Argos. Megiddo, or however you're supposed to pronounce it. We've seen that in the anime. Pretty effective. Master Swordsman, Rimuru is a Master Swordsman trained by ha uh, Kaguru. Uh, I, I don't know how to say his name. And further refines uh, their technique in the fight with Hinata. Uh, Rumuru was able to completely overwhelm Yuki with pure skill. Uh, their weapon of choice is a katana. Uh, special soul. Rumuru has an extraordinary strong soul, being able to hold multiple powerful ultimate skills and reincarnating into a magical body while also retaining all of their memories. Hmm. Then we got CL. We talked of or seen that previously. Uh, CL prevents Rimuru's deep psyche from being interfered with, which blocks attempts to read their mind or memories, even by beings such as true dragons. So basically, you can't mind fuck him. So that's cool. Um, in the events of uh, Games End, CL obtained a significant amount of skills that would have otherwise been. Re uh, I think in Reamer's possession in order to increase the reaction time when uh, using them in emergency situations. Due to the complete uh, in, uh, integer, or that word, uh, of their cores, uh, Reamer can still access and use their skills at will without having to create new coffee, copies. Uh, we got all creation, alteration, analytical appraisal, uh, attribute uh Conversion, chant annulment, food chain, future attack pre uh, prediction, law domination, future attack prediction, um, did I say law domination? Well, there it is again. Uh, parallel operations, syn uh, synthesis slash separation, thought acceleration, and thought domination. So yeah. This should be his equipment, which is Drago Blade, a uh, god grade Kyokuto, I think that's how you say it. Uh, Kurobe's masterpiece. It has no uh, inherent special abilities in exchange for being uh, exceptionally durable, but uh, has two slots where blade cores can be inserted. Uh, blade or black robe, uh, god grade armor created with material material creation. Anti magic mask, uh, magic item suppresses magic fuels. 
uh, Demon's Ring magic item, standard equipment in uh, the Octogram created by Velzegard, I think that's how you say that, allows for cross space time communication with other demon lords. And just in case you wanted to know what those other abilities uh, do, this is all creation. It allows the user to comprehend anything as long as they have a basic understanding of it and is perceivable to the user. Then we got the next one, which allows the user to analyze and appraise all targets. Uh, the analytical prowess of this skill depends on the user. A different user gains more information with uh, different means, i.e. sight, touch, consumption. However, most users can gain information with uh, multiple approaches. The amount of information the uh, acquire or acquired also uh, depends on the knowledge of the user has about the target's concept, uh, i.e. a blacksmith could gather more information on a sword than the average people. Chant annulment, uh, it eliminates uh, the need for chanting when using magic. Uh, after a spell is analyzed or successfully cast, the spell is stored in the user's mind and available to be cast just by thinking about activation. Law Domination. Uh, it is the enhanced version of law manipulation, allowing for uh, potentially absolute control over the laws of the world uh, from either a magical or scientific perspective. Uh, from fi uh, five base uh, elements of earth, water, fire, wind, and space down to the properties of gravity, heat, inertia, etc. Uh, the, the effectiveness still depends on the user's ability and knowledge. Uh, as you can see, like, you know, up there, allows uh, the user to detach their uh, anal uh, analysis of phenomena from their regular thought. Since the, uh, you know, this is... Degenerate uh, has two uh, effects. Synthesis, uh, transform two different targets into a single object, uh, can be used to chain the effect of several skills together, earning the user new skills with significantly less effort than would otherwise be required. Separation releases the properties uh, inherent to the target and separates them. Example, uh, include, uh, but are not limited to depriving a person of skills. Uh, a skill or with skills, uh, with the exception of one bound to their soul and removing foreign objects such as entities, uh, you know, uh, you know, possession or like just toxins within the body. We got thought acceleration, which, uh, is it significantly increases the user's thought process speed. Uh, the acceleration varies. Uh, from a few hundred times to millions or even hundreds of million times, depending on the individual. And thought domination uh, allows for the manipulation of others' th uh, uh, thoughts and ensure they're following, uh, they follow orders. This can range from subtle manipulation to full control over the targets. Going over, you know stats, um, he is at multiversal level, so he is multiversal as shown here you can see like the you know all the stuff that he scales to like right here and of course so you can see uh he is somewhere around massively faster than light but he can go to infinite speed as uh, superior to veldanava who was the source of time itself on a conceptual level able to instantaneously reach any location with his will alone uh so yeah he can just have infinite speed so yeah uh, going into Kumiko's stuff, uh, she was at first born as a lesser uh, Tartact, uh, the lowest difficulty monster, which is interesting. Due to her low stat, she was uh, initially forced to rely on her human in you know, uh, integrity and creative use of her limited moveset just to survive. However, Tartacts jump in power with each evolution, causing her uh, continuous struggles. For uh, survival, gradually turned her into not just the strongest reincarnation, but one of the most powerful beings on the planet. Furthermore, while most of her kind uh, rely solely on size, brute, fo uh, brute strength, uh, or and brute strength, uh, she adopted a fighting style focused on magic, webs, and agility. Uh, we got her scythe, uh, a weapon built from uh, one of Kumiko's, you know, scythe-like limbs. Uh, when she was a arachne, 
a piece of Kumiko's soul seems to have bonded itself to it, though the parallel mind skill created a new mind to fill in the absent spot left by the mind that merged with Ariel, uh, causing it to constantly emit a dark aura, uh, be, uh, be able to cut through anti-magic constructs, uh, process automatic growth properties and be um, completely indestructible within the confines of the system and there's uh the stats apparently of it uh and the traits uh, automatic uh repair rod attribute and dark attribute titles and skills uh her bonus skill uh as a reincarnation it boosts her speed stat and its growth uh moreover Unlike most reincarnation bonuses, it's uh, not a unique skill, but a high tier one that anyone can obtain. And then we got that, which I don't even know what that is. Uh, a unique skill shared by all reincarnation. It restores her HP, MP, and SP upon leveling up. However, there is a limit to how much one particularly recovering uh, and her stats became like too high. Appraisal allows her to see the target's information while only giving the name on lower levels uh, on higher levels it also reveals the targets uh, status values titles and skills uh, wisdom the evolution of appraisal created by B uh, after overhearing Kumiko complain about it not having an evolution uh, it grants ex uh, ex 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 eh, that word I'm sorry knowledge of all non-restricted information in the system and a constantly updating map of all places she has visited as well as the ability to mark targets uh, appraise fellow rulers and perceive magic power uh, we got height of i think it says occultism uh, granted with wisdom allows her to cast uh, magic without having you know the uh, skill and add uh, mp you know, to increase its power. We got heretic magic gained when uh, she cannibalized a Tartex corpse, but unable to use it until she acquired height of occultism. Uh, it allows her to create illusions. Dark magic allows her to summon and control darkness. Spatial magic allows her to create portals and teleport herself to previous visited locations. Earth magic copied uh, from Earth Dragon Araba. Allows her to control the earth. Wind magic copied from a that allows her to control the air. I think there was also water magic which allows her to create water essentially and summon it. Uh, fire magic summon and control fire. Light magic summon and control light. Healing magic allows her to heal herself and others. Poison magic allows her to summon and control poison the liquid. However, she does not use it in... Pr uh, preference for her poison synthesis skill so basically she just likes that other skill a lot more which is why she doesn't use it we got pride uh greatly increases her exp and proficiency gain as well as increasing her skill capacity however it can also potentially affect her mind to where she considers others to be just exp source abyss magic uh, allows her to convert uh everything in its radius to ma energy um and give it to the system. However, it is initially difficult magic power to use, so uh, very few beings, including Kumiko, are said to have wielded it. Uh, perse perseverance allows her to use her MP and HP once a ladder runs out. Uh, basically, uh, if she runs out of a, uh, HP, um, she can use MP instead uh, to, you know, so she doesn't fucking die as soon as her HP l runs low. Evil Eyes, uh, gained with Perseverance, allows her to inflict ailments uh, to her targets just by looking at them. Furthermore, due to having uh, eight eyes, she can either use multiple different ones at the same time or use just one through multiple eyes. So that's that's cool. We got the Jinx uh, uh, Evil Eye, drains the HP, MP, and SP of the target and adds it to her own. Uh, and Hair Evil Eye, freeze, er, Inert Evil Eye, sorry, freezes the target in time. Uh, petrifying evil eye uh, blocks the target's senses. Uh, repellent uh, evil eye pushes the target away or forward herself, uh, and vice versa. Annihilating evil eye gains the following, uh, following her evolution in Eid 
uh, Sane, I don't know how to say that, uh, turns the target to dust at the cost of the eye using it. That's horrible. Uh, sealing evil eye shields the target skills. Anti-magic evil eye disrupts the target's magic. Warped evil eye twists space around the target to crush them. Future sight uh, anal uh, analyzes the current situation and is uh, to accurately predict the future. Telescopic vision allows her to see further and through objects. Uh, this is incompatible with uh, her evil eye. We got Sloth. Uh, drastically uh, increases enemy HP, uh, MP, and SP costs in the surroundings. Exhaustion nullification gained with Sloth prevents her from feeling tired, as well as allowing her to stay uh, awake as long as she wants without getting any ill effect due to lack of sleep. Uh, charity uh, drastically increases HP recovery of those around her that she perceives as allies. Miracle magic, the higher rank of healing magic uh, it affects, are so effective that they seem to be caused by gods. Spider thread, uh, a Tartek skill that allows her to produce spider thread. Makes sense. Thread control allows her to telepathically control her thread and alter its shape to create all sorts of contraptions. Divine thread weaving allows her to control her thread on a molecular level, uh, as well as poison attack. Um, it, it's a skill that allows her to poison her target upon uh, physical contact, uh, gained following uh, her rod attack. Uh, her Zoa El, uh, you know, form allows her to turn her target into dust upon contact with one of her scythe-like four limbs at the cost of said limb. Poison synthesis, as we've seen earlier, allows her to conjure poison liquid by consuming MP, as, is, uh, as it is not magic but a skill. Using it does not require, you know, height of occultism, and she actually prefers this to poison magic. Psychokinesis allows her to move objects with her mind by consuming MP. She often uses it with poison synthesis to control the poisonous liquid she produces. Medicine synthesis allows her to conjure medicine by consuming MP, which serves as her primary method of recovering before the, you know, that magic. Here are all of her resistances, uh, which is... Uh, Cutting resistance uh, cancels cutting attacks, piercing resistance, you know, shock, uh, shock resistance, flame resistance, uh, water resistance, uh, wind resistance, earth resistance, light resistance, dark resistance, heavy resistance, uh, which it cancels out gravity magic, interesting, uh, status condition nullification, immunity uh, uh, against debuffs, uh, acid resistance, rot resistance, heresy nullification, uh, immunity against uh, illusions and mental attacks against the soul. Pain nullification. Uh, it allows her not to feel pain, but she is still aware of uh, da damage to her body takes and how severe they are. So, you know, even though she doesn't have pain, she does know when she's getting hurt. Um, uh, Dragon Barrier weakens uh, lower level magic in her surroundings. Uh, Parallel Minds allows her to uh, make mental clones of herself that effectively give her multiple personalities. Uh, by having each of these uh, other cell, uh, selves take over a specific bodily function or task, she can effectively lessen her mental uh, load. Soul Consumption. Uh, she can send her parallel minds through psychic uh, connections she has with others to eat away at their souls. Uh, weakening uh, them while absorbing their strength. Uh, her own uh, accounting, uh, according to D, she uh, invented this skill on herself without any aid from the system. So she just created this shit by herself, which is apparently considered a god level feat. Interesting. Immortality uh, gained following her evolution to Zana uh, Horua. Uh, it makes her impossible to kill within the confines of the system, except by using attacks that directly attack the soul, like heresy and abyssal magic. Uh, egg laying. She can lay eggs. However, uh, it will take time uh, for the offspring to hatch, as they will initially be in a weakened state, uh, as they are just newborns. Uh, newborns. 
egg revival, similar to soul consumption, using her psychic connection with her clones, uh, she can move her soul into an egg and take uh, over her newborn offspring's body, uh, as it did not have a soul as of its own yet. However, after being reborn, she will initially be uh, an awakened state of her body will be that of an uh, infinite. Going over to attack potency, uh, her best you know attack potency like feats is. Multi-continental level uh, wields the energy of MA bomb and is stated to be powerful enough to destroy continents. Speed, she is at best hypersonic, uh, all the way down here, um, with you know all this, you know, all this other shit here. Um, but yeah, yeah. So based off of all of that, um, who really wins in a fight? So both of them basically have resistances to. Pretty much all magic, although the heresy magic might be a big deal for Rimuru since he doesn't have anything similar to that in his world, but he also can nullify, you know, uh, status conditions, so they probably won't really be that big of a deal. Rimuru does have anti-magic barriers, so she wouldn't be able to use her magic, but she can just break it with her scythe, which can just break anti-magic anyways, so yeah. And even though if she tries to do the whole mental or uh, soul consumption thing, uh, yeah, it's probably not going to work with things like CL and him just having an immunity to soul attacks. So she, nothing would go anywhere with that. So many of their abilities pretty much cancel out each other, but with one small little problem. To my knowledge, um... Rimuru, between these two, is the only one that can completely manipulate time. As in, not only can he time travel, he can stop time, manipulate even space for that matter. She kind of can, but like, not to the extent he can. And don't get me started on their stats. She is at best hypersonic and just multi-continental, while he is multiversal level and has infinite speed. Yeah, I might be, like, missing stuff with either of them, but based off of what we've seen, you know, off of that stuff, I would probably lean towards Rimuru winning this one. Alright, did I miss something? I probably did with these two. They have so many goddamn abilities that it's just hard to keep track of all of them. I probably even missed some things while reading it, because there's just so many, but, you know, if I did and it could have changed the outcome, you can tell me in the comments. I'm basically just doing this for fun anyways. I'm not taking a serious note into this. I'm just, you know, going two characters and seeing who probably win. Also, uh, subscribe uh, if you like, you know, this stuff. I'm going to keep making these until... I don't know. I'll, I'll just keep making them because I like doing them. Uh, but... Uh, like the video as well uh, if you you know like the video I guess um, and next video is going to be an interesting uh, one since um, I guess the two combatants do have a sort of control over other people